In mythology, the hero has a destiny. Do you have a destiny? Stage number zero. Having a destiny and the childhood of the human hero. Now, just to remind you, we call this stage stage number zero because, in a sense, it's the starting point of the entire hero's journey. So, the the symbol that we use for the stage is a human being with a star above them, and that's a symbol that reminds us that you have a destiny. It's not always a step where the hero actually is actively involved. Now, some of the stages are more active and more passive, but this is really the point where it's all about the childhood of the human hero. Sometimes it's even about a prophecy that has been made before the hero was born or at his birth. Sometimes there's a little bit of active involvement, like in the case of Heracles, for example, who was hated by Hera because he was the son of Zeus and a mortal woman. So Hera tried to kill him and she sent snakes to his, his bed as a child and he grabbed them and choked them to death. So that was quite an active deed of Heracles showing his divine nature. In other cases, it's more like somebody had a prophecy. One of the most well-known stories about a, a child who has like a divine origin that most of you will be familiar with, independent of your religion, is of course the Christmas story. The story where the baby Jesus um, was found, especially the story, the part of the story where, for example, the three the three magi as they're called it's very often translated as wise man but what it really refers to were people who who were magicians who were people who would see the the influence of the stars and uh, who had this this foresight this knowledge that this would mean something significant so they were searching for baby jesus finding him and addressing him as a divine being or as a king. So this is one of the very common stories you all know, and this type of myth you'll find a lot. You'll find a lot of stories and myths about the childhood or the early lifetime of the human hero. So in a sense, the story of Jesus was modeled according to the story of an earlier um, figure in, uh, Jewish history, which was King David, of course. And King David, before he was a king, was also found to... Was actually, there was actually a, a prophecy, and in this case, quite literally through a prophet, because it was Samuel who was told by God, look for the, the one I'm, I will anoint, um, the one I've chosen. And he actually found David, and at first you know, he didn't, didn't even realize that he was looking for somebody like David. He would think, oh, well, this king must be somebody who has more like a, a statue, um, you know, of a king. He has the, the, the outer, the looks of a king. But the story very clearly tells us, no, you need to look inside. You need to look inside for the real king, for the real anointed one. And of course, um, because the Christian mythology wanted to justify the position of Jesus, they've taken all those or certain elements of the story of David and placed them onto the story of Jesus. So we have this, this situation here that the story of David and the story of Jesus have certain similarities, but not so much just because um, there is this, this, this connection and that the um, Jewish understanding was always is that, the pro, that the Messiah would come from the house of, of David. So this is a common theme in mythology. For example, Abraham received a prophecy that he would have a son. And he didn't believe this because he was old and Sarah was old, but it still happened. So these types of prophecies are quite common. And, and Abraham received this prophecy that 
his descendants would spread over the earth, which of course, in retrospective, we can consider to be true. Now, many other famous heroes and figures uh, of mythology have had a prophecy or some kind of, you know, divine indication of their existence. So, for example, there's a story about the birth of Buddha, there's a story about the birth of Lao Tse, and many, many others. So, the common idea here isn't so much about this specific um, or that specific religious figure, even though on a personal level that may be important to you. Um, I want to give you some understanding of a, the archetypal understanding of what's behind this. And the archetypal understanding of what's behind this is that there is a destiny for the hero. And that's, that's really, really important. The, this destiny, and we find this even in, in popular, you know, in, in popular stories like, for example, Star Wars. There's the same, the same idea, for example, there was the special birth of Anakin Skywalker and there was the, the destiny that Luke Skywalker had already to start with when he was given to his uncle and his aunt to be cared for. He already had a destiny and the idea was that Obi-Wan Kenobi would watch over him, this strange wizard Ben Kenobi. But more about that in a later video. Or watch our separate series on Star Wars if you're interested in the details. So the hero has a destiny. And the destiny of the hero is marked by a prophecy. And this prophecy distinguishes him from other people. But what about us? Um, was there a prophecy about my life or about your life? You might think, no, there wasn't, so we're not heroes. And that's exactly the function that these prophecies have to understand what our place in the world is. So this is a very, very important part of this myth, of this structure, of this archetypal structure. It tells us that we have a destiny. You have a destiny. You have a destiny that waits to be fulfilled. Now, different people would listen to those myths and different people would have different understandings. You know, the reason why stories about doing something heroic have survived in a culture where, you know, like in any culture, the majority of people did not do anything heroic and they were probably not too fond of the idea that they should do anything heroic. That's why the heroes are usually framed as being beyond human nature. And once they are beyond human nature, the average person can feel okay about themselves. They can say, hey, I'm not something special, but I don't have to be. I'm not a, a demigod. I, there's no prophecy about me. It's the same today. Today we have superheroes or Jedi. They were special. Nobody can expect from me to destroy a Death Star when I'm not a superhero. But that's actually the important point about this stage. We need to understand that there's a hero potential within us. And that's the, the more secret message of the myth. That's the secret message of the idea that there's a prophecy. The prophecy in general archetypal human terms simply says, you can be a hero. If you accept the message of the hero's journey, you can be a hero. Every one of us has this potential within ourselves. Now think about that. The hero's journey can be applied to every context. It can be applied to your entire life or it can be applied to a specific project. And this stage in a specific project is really, really important because the destiny, the, 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 the future that you were meant to have, the destiny that the hero is supposed to fulfill, that's really like the goal of the whole story. So in the beginning of the story, at point zero, in the myth, it's like the higher beings decide what the hero is supposed to do at the end of the story. So we have a starting point, we have an end point. And in whatever undertaking, in whatever project you do in your own life, it's the same thing. You have a starting point, you have an end point, at which you hopefully have a result. So let's look at the structure, at the significance of this myth as a metaphor for our own life. We can apply this for our entire life or just for a specific project. And when we do that, 
we find that the structure stays the same. We have a starting point at which in the hero's journey there's this destiny of what the hero is supposed to do and at the end there's this result when he comes back from the adventure having fulfilled his destiny. But just as well we can imagine that in a project we have a starting point where we have a goal and at the end it's fulfilled. And that's exactly what this stage is if we apply it to a project in our life. It's the goal setting stage. So we talk about the goal setting stage of at the beginning of any project. And it's, it's really, really important to be aware of the significance of goal setting. Now we might say, hey, wait a moment, this is trivial. Now, are you really telling me that all the hero's journey is telling me is I need to have a goal? Well, no, that's not all. But really, really think about the importance of the goal setting stage for a moment. There's a lot of myths and there's a lot of stories that tell us what happens if we don't do this stage properly. Let me illustrate the importance of goal setting with a joke. So there's this really, really poor, starving couple, but they're good people, so they're granted three wishes. The woman, because she's so starving, she really can't think of anything else but, you know, the hunger in, the, in, the, in her stomach. So she says, I wish I'd, I'd have like a huge sausage to eat. Wow. She immediately is granted this wish. The man sees that and thinks to himself like, you could have wished for everything, you know? You, you could have wished for us never having to starve for the rest of your life and you just waste one wish on just one stupid sausage. I wish the sausage would be in your face as your nose. And so it happens. The second wish is granted and she has a huge sausage in her, no in her face as a nose. So <laughs> what, what, what can they do? So the third wish, all they can do is to use the third wish to undo it all. So. She has a normal face again, and they are as poor and as starving as they were before. So this story illustrates very much how important it is to be aware of the power of intention and goal setting. If the couple would have known and would have sought what they really want, they could have made much better choices. You may think that's obvious, and it is obvious in the story, but in everyday life that's not so obvious. What is the most important goal in your life? If you had one wish, just one wish, what would you wish for? Think about it. And if you like, let us know about your thoughts about that in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget, if you haven't done it already, like and subscribe. See you soon.